brothers and sisters. Uh, by my clock, it's 9.30. We're glad that you are here. Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. Um, and a blessed Lord's Day to all of you who come now into the presence of the Lord to offer your praise and your worship. We are grateful for this opportunity to, to come before the Lord to offer him our uh, prayers, our, uh, our thanksgiving for the blessings <clears throat> that we have received, and to, uh, to uh, once again put our trust in him as uh, we seek to live in faith throughout these days. And so glad that you are here to be with us in worship, and I welcome all of you who are joining in by Zoom, those of you who are coming into the sanctuary, grateful to see you this morning. Uh, we will begin worship and prepare our hearts uh, as we listen to the prelude. Beth, if you will, please.
May the peace of God our Father and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and I welcome you this morning to worship with First Presbyterian Church. I want to say thank you to the Bells for recording our prelude this morning, uh, coming in and, uh, and uh, taking the time to practice and make the recording, and also to, to Beth and Mike and Kim for making the, the recording and the video possible for us to, to see today, so I'm very grateful for that. God bless you all on this Mother's Day Sunday. It is a, 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 a good time to be together and a hard time because getting together is, is rough. But we are grateful that we have this opportunity anyway to, to come to our Lord and to give thanks to God for the many blessings that we have received, including um, the, the blessings that he has shown to us through our mothers. Uh, the oh, the announcement that I'll share particularly today is uh, uh, and it's not in print, but I, I just encourage you, uh, those of you especially as you're Zooming in, to stay on after the service for a bit and to chat with one another. Uh, I know those who are coming in person now have this opportunity to fellowship a little bit after church, and we're, we're grateful for that. Uh, for those who are here in church, I just want us to remember now that, that New Abbey is worshiping with us and coming in and starting at 11.30, they'll, they'll be setting up at about 11, so uh, we may need to, to think about taking our conversations outside or in the, the foyer a little bit as, as they're coming in, but, uh, but this is a good time. I'm really grateful that at last we are able to, to see one another a bit uh, uh, at least top half of face to top half of face. Um, and, uh, and for those of you zooming in, I've been hearing people say that one of the things that they appreciate is just hearing the, the conversation, the life conversation after church. So if you stay, if, if you're zooming in, there's not a good way for, for the Zoomers and the in-person people to really communicate across that barrier that well. But, but if you're zooming in and you stay and maybe uh, uh, let your face be shown or, or just uh, take part in that, that conversation afterwards, um, that is really important to people. You may feel it yourself, and there are others who come in, and they may never say a word, but they're hearing that conversation, and they're telling me what a blessing that is for them. So uh, it's another way, it's a, it's another way to, to reach out and stay connected. So thank you uh, for staying on and having a bit of that digital coffee hour for a few minutes after the worship service. On Mother's Day, I know it's a day, uh, there, there's uh, maybe activities, maybe things that are still being planned or lunch schedules to think through. Uh, so there, there can be many details. There can be all kinds of thoughts and feelings in a day like this. We're certainly missing mothers who are no longer with us. We're missing the opportunity to gather with families uh, as we would like to. Uh, so uh, what we appreciate those challenges, and we know how important it is for us to worship and to draw to the Lord and to draw strength from Him on this day. So uh, as we gather, and no matter what burdens you are carrying as you come into this place, we come and we ask the Lord to take those burdens from us and in their place to give us His peace. Our call to worship is from... Um, Matthew 11, as Jesus says to you and to me, he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us worship God with our opening hymn, hymn number 374, Now Thank We All Our God.
We give thanks to God for his many blessings, and we come to him to seek his forgiveness. God is holy, and we acknowledge that we have broken his commandments, and we need his grace and his mercy. So let us together seek and plead for his mercy as we pray the prayer of confession printed in the bulletin. Almighty God, you have spoken to us through your word and by your spirit. You have given us mothers, fathers, teachers, and other leaders to show us your ways. We admit that we have broken your commandments in thought, word, and deed. We have done what is right in our own eyes and given little thought to your will. We have allowed our fears to keep us from encouraging and helping others. Instead of trusting you, we have relied upon our strength and wisdom. Forgive us, merciful Father, through the grace of Jesus. Take away our guilt and our shame and restore us to joyful fellowship with you and your people. This we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Let's now take a moment, a, a period of silence when we can search our own hearts and to ask God to forgive us for our own individual uh, sins and confessions. Let us pray. receive and believe this promise from God's word. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel through faith in Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven. I'd invite you to uh, turn with me in your bulletins or, or watch on the, uh, uh, the, the, your screens. We will read responsively Psalm 113 together, and I invite you to respond with the bold type. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and on the earth, who raises the poor from the dust, lifts the needy from the ashes, to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Glenn, if you'll come now and lead us in our next song, Speak, O Lord, please. Okay. Come 
open us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ may be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of I enjoy so much hearing Glenn play and uh, lead us in, in the music. Missing, missing the worship band, I'm hoping we can get the band together sometime soon. Uh, I just want to remark, some of you may have been he here in the sanctuary early while we were doing the mic checks. And the best thing of all, Glenn was uh, doing his mic check and playing a little bit. And uh, little Lydia was on the bed right behind him uh, on her stomach, she's rolling over a little bit now, lifting up her head and, and, and watching Glenn. Uh, that was just my best moment of the day right there as a grandparent, I can tell you that. I, but I'm really grateful. Uh, thank you, Glenn, and thank you, Allison, for coming now and leading us in our New Testament reading. Thank you. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not to fear, but of power and love and self-control. 
Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I am convinced that he is able to guard until the day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Thank you, Allison, very much. And uh, if we've got children, will you come down and join me? I'd be grateful to see you. I think I did unmute myself. Okay. I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ruth. I'll explain why I'm in Ruth for a moment. In a moment, I uh, will begin just by asking: uh, When we get in a jam, where do we go for help? We can feel pretty secure, safe, independent when things are going well, but when, when our plans fail, when we have health issues, when, when relationships break, when we lose a loved one, uh, when financial troubles hit us, where, wh where do we turn? What, what do we do about that? Uh, life is often hard and challenging, uh, and we can feel vulnerable to uh, the the events, the circumstances around us. We look to God. As Christians, we look to God. We look to God from whom our help comes. And that's good and right. But how does God intervene? How does God help us? Uh, he can change our circ circumstances around us. He can do that even in miraculous ways. He can change our hearts. But sometimes God just works through people as well. You can use people in our lives. And we see this in the book of Ruth. I, I think uh, the, the book of Ruth uh, can show us one of the ways that God demonstrates His loving kindness to us. I've been reading through the Bible in my uh, daily devotional times. I've just gone through the book of Judges. Some of you have read through the Judges, and, and you've seen just a, a pretty dismal cycle of, of uh, the people will get themselves in a fix because they reject God, and they do their own thing, and, and things go crazy, terrible, and they cry out to God, and God helps them, and for a little while things are okay, but very soon it says over and over again, the, they, the people just did what was right in their own eyes, forgot about God, lived their own ways. Uh, and so I read through Judges, and then come to the book of, of Ruth, and it was just such a blessing to me to read through these four chapters, and as I did so, I said, I'm going to preach on that on Mother's Day. I wanted to set this part and set it apart for you. Now, it's, it's a, a short book, just four chapters, but I can't read all four chapters to you this morning. Um, but you will do yourself a favor if you sometime today read the book of Ruth. It'll only take you about 15 minutes to, to read it, and uh, you'll be able to fill in some of the gaps that I will leave. I'm only going to hit some highlights in the book of Ruth for you today. 
um, read a portion now, but uh, you can fill in the rest later, and I will fill in some of the, uh, the, the summaries of the gaps as I, as I share from Ruth with you this morning. But let's pray, and we will, we will turn to Ruth together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your loving kindness. You know our needs. You know our burdens. You know even now as we, as we come before you that there, are, uh, that there are things that we are feeling and thinking that are hard. We're going through some trials. We are experiencing some brokenness in relationships. We are grieving. Um, Lord, we turn to you. You are the one from whom our help comes. You are steadfast in your love for us. Uh, and Lord, as we, as we turn to the book of Ruth, help us to see some of the ways that you show us your help, some of the tangible ways that you love us and enable us to get through uh, difficult times that we might face. And so, Lord... Um, Help us to set aside other distractions, to turn fully and faithfully to you, to listen to your word as you speak to us, and enable us, Lord, by your spirit to not only hear it, but also take it to heart and to apply it. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just before I read, I, I was reminded I... I had a chance uh, just to take a quick trip down to uh, West Lafayette, see my own mom for early Mother's Day, and, and see my dad and um, my aunt, who I, I think is zooming in with us today. My aunt is quite a card person. She has a ministry of cards. Um, I think she keeps Hallmark in business. She, she is just sending cards all the time. And, and mom had, had shared a card and a, uh, and a tote, uh, matching tote bag that she had sent to my mom. And it was so cool. Um, and the tote bag had four women uh, painted. Uh, this watercolor artist had, had depicted these four women from the Bible, uh, Tamar and Rahab and Ruth and Bathsheba, and, and talking about how these are all important mothers in Jesus' family tree and how God blessed um, all of us through these four mothers and uh, if I had thought about it earlier, I probably have a way to call that up and, and uh, project it. Maybe I'll do it next week, but, uh, but I didn't do that. But uh, kind of a cool card, cool encouragement. And Ruth, uh, among the four women, Ruth is depicted as holding a sheaf of grain, a, a bundle of grain, which is a, a good marker and a good reminder. But I, I appreciated this artist and her rendering and uh, thinking broadly of, of, of the mothers that uh, God has used in uh, the Old Testament times. And we'll, we'll see that a little bit here now in the book of Ruth. And I'm going to start um, a, a bit in the middle of the story. I'm going to start reading at Ruth chapter 1 and verse 15. Hear the word of God. The, the Ruth Naomi has come on come on hard times, and her her she says to her daughters-in-law, "You're just going to have to go back to your own families." So that's what's happening here. Naomi said, "See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law." But Ruth said, "Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you, for where you go, I will go, and where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said, No more. So Ruth stayed with her mother, her mother-in-law, Naomi, and they returned to Israel, and uh, they are trying to uh, find a way to survive now back in their homeland. And 
uh, Ruth begins to glean in one of Naomi's relatives' fields, and that's where we take it up next in 2.17. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law, Naomi, saw that she, what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over from being satisfied. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where did you glean today, and where have you worked? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. So she told her mother-in-law with whom she had worked and said, The man's name with whom I worked today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the Lord, whose kindness has not forsaken the living or the dead. Naomi also said to her, The man is a close relative of ours, one of our redeemers. And Ruth the Moabite said, Besides, he said to me, You shall keep close by... You shall keep close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that you go out with his, his young women, lest in another field you be assaulted. So she kept close to the young women of Boaz, gleaning until the end of the barley and wheat harvests, and she lived with her mother-in-law. Then Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Is not Boaz our relative, with whose whose young women you were? See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Wash, therefore, and anoint yourself, and put on your cloak, and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking." But when he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what what to do. And she replied, All that you say I will do. So she went down to the threshing floor and did just as her mother-in-law had commanded her. And when Boaz had eaten and drunk and his heart was merry, he went to lie down at the end of the heap of grain. Then she came softly and uncovered his feet and lay down. At midnight the man was startled and turned over, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. He said, Who are you? And she answered, I am Ruth, your servant. Spread your wings over your servant, for you are a redeemer. And he said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first, in that you have not gone after young men, whether rich, poor, or rich. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you ask, for all my fellow townsmen know that you are a worthy woman. And now it is true that I am a redeemer. Yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Remain tonight, and in the morning, if he will redeem you, good, let him do it. But if he is not willing to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will redeem you. Lie down until the morning. So she lay at his feet until the morning, but arose before one could recognize another. And he said, Let it not be known that the, women came to the th- that the woman came to the threshing floor. And he said, Bring the garment you are wearing and hold it out. So she held it, and he measured out six measures of barley and put it on her. Then she went into the city. And when she came to her mother-in-law, she said, How did you fare, my daughter? Then she told her all that the man had done for her, saying, These six measures of barley he gave to me, for he said to me, You must not go back empty-handed to your mother-in-law. She replied, Wait, my daughter, until you learn how the matter turns out, for the man will not rest, but will settle the matter today. Okay, then I am going to skip to one more section in chapter 4, and we'll put it all together. Chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Hear the word of God. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And he went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, 
Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, the main idea I want you to see in all of this story of Ruth is that God shows us his loving kindness through mothers and family and other people often, and always through Jesus, our Redeemer. That's the main thing that I want to lift out out of this story of Ruth. Uh, Naomi and her family finds themselves to be in desperate need. But the God of providence helps them. And he helps them through a mother, a mother-in-law, through family relationships, and through a redeemer, through an outside protector. So we see a mother and a redeemer here. We start with the mother, the mother-in-law, Naomi. And I will refer to her as a mother because Ruth very much uh, regarded Naomi as her own mother. Uh, they had a very close relationship. Um, we will see how God often shows us his loving kindness through mothers and family members and other people. And we see it in Naomi. We see it in how, the ways Naomi loves and leads and lives out her faith before her daughter-in-law, Ruth. Naomi loved her family and her children, but life had not been easy for her. Uh, you'll see more of this when you go and read the whole uh, book for yourselves. But, but Naomi and her husband, they left Israel because of a famine. And they needed to go someplace where they could get bread and they could survive. And so Elimelech and Naomi, they went down to Moab, a, a country that wasn't too far away on the other side of the Dead Sea. Um, the Moabites and the Israelites didn't get along great, but in a time of famine, you do what you need to do to keep the family together. So they go down and they, uh, they settle there. They sojourn there. While they are there, Elimelech, Naomi's husband, dies. And, and their two sons uh, marry Moabite women. And the two sons die. So that leaves just Naomi and her two daughters-in-law. And what are they going to do now? Um, well, Naomi had heard that the famine may be over in Israel, and she resolves to return. But she encourages the daughters-in-law to go back. She's going to lead them and tell them, this is what you need to do. This is her advice. This is her, her counsel. It will be best for you if you go back to your own mothers and families. Now, Naomi loves them. They are very close to her, and she is going to miss them greatly, but she is going to do what seems best to them, for them. And she does what she thinks is right, even though it's painful, and Ruth returns to the promised land. She goes back to the promised land uh, with Naomi. Naomi encourages, uh, encourages Ruth to glean in the field. She's going to have to go out. It's the time of the harvest, and she can glean in the field. She coaches Ruth on how to present herself, uh, some discipling here, some life skills training, how to go out into these fields and do this gleaning. Uh, just as an aside, I think it's a wonderful story of of uh, the way the people of God had patterned themselves 
and arranged their society. Even the law was written to allow for this thing called gleaning. And it was a, 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 a demonstration of, of wisdom and compassion that was written into the law of Moses. And you may be familiar with it, but the idea was if you had fields, when it came time to, to harvest the fields, you would, you would reap the harvest, but you wouldn't go to the very edges. You wouldn't try to bring in every last sheaf of grain. You would leave the edges. That would allow the poor then to come in after you had harvested the field, and the poor could, could harvest along the sides of the field and, and do the work for themselves to glean and to thresh for themselves, and, but, but to uh, have this work and to have this source of income. Uh, they would do that with grain and with fruit, allowed the poor to collect. Uh, now, it might have been easier in, a, in an agrarian society to build those kind of, of structures in, uh, but I, I wish we could find ways to do that. Uh, that's very, uh, uh, very uh, compassionate way of ordering the society. So that's what Ruth does. She goes out and, and, and she finds the field of Boaz, and they have done most of the, 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 the harvesting, and uh, Ruth is part of several others who are following along after the harvesters and gleaning what they are leaving behind. Throughout this, all, uh, throughout this whole period, Naomi has been living out her faith in living out her faith before Ruth. Naomi has gone through these hard times, but she still believes in God and believes that God is a God of providence, that God orders things. So she'll say, for example, uh, when she hears that the famine is lifted, she says, it looks like God's hand has returned upon Israel. And so it is God who has brought crops again to Israel, and maybe I can go back. But she is also aware that she's gone through some bitter times. Her husband has died. Her sons have died. Instead of rejecting God, she says, God is a God of providence. It is a bitter providence in her life right now. But she still acknowledges that God is the one who is leading in all things. She had a kind of mature faith in this. She sees God at work at all times, good and bad. She doesn't sugarcoat things. Her faith is not phony or superficial. And, and I, I think that Ruth benefits then by seeing Naomi's faith and how she deals with the hard as well as with the good. And I think that's the kind of faith that we want to have and that we want to, to cling to ourselves and we want to, to live out in front of others. Not, uh, we don't need to express every doubt to everyone, but, but we certainly don't want to, to portray a phony picture that things are always good when they're not. We're not secular. We, we're not saying God is irrelevant. We're not secular. And on the other side, we are not, um, we are not naive about how life can be difficult and challenging. We just want our faith to be real and grounded in the providence of God. Well, that's the faith. That's the faith that Naomi is living out before Ruth. And Ruth is watching. And she is learning to trust in God even when she doesn't understand. God is showing his loving kindness then to Ruth through Naomi, through this mother as she lives out her faith. But God also shows His loving kindness in another way, not just through Naomi, but God shows loving kindness through a redeemer, Boaz. And so Boaz now comes on to center stage, and, and Boaz is a remarkable character. Uh, we would call him a stand-up guy. Uh, compassionate to the poor and the gleaners, he cares about his uh, workers and his employees in the field. Um, Ruth is very, very vulnerable, and Boaz protects her and says, you come back here. If you go into other fields, I don't know what might happen, but you come back here to my field, glean in my field, and I'll make sure that you are protected. 
and even is passing along extra food to uh, Naomi and to Ruth. Instead of taking advantage of her situation, um, Boaz is humbled and flattered. He says, for example, in, in Ruth chapter 3 and verse 10, he says, um, May you be, he says to Ruth, may you be blessed by the Lord, my daughter. You have made this last kindness greater than the first in that you have not gone after young men, whether poor or rich. You've asked me to come in and to be your protector and to be your redeemer. Instead of taking advantage, he takes on Ruth and he is a patron for her, a, a, a guardian uh, in this, in this, Boaz is being more than just a stand-up guy, more than a nice guy. He is being a kinsman redeemer. And some of you who have done some reading in the Old Testament or other commentaries know about this idea of kinsman redeemer. It's a very particular kind of relationship that we see among the Jews. A kinsman redeemer is someone that is appointed in the Old Testament law to stand in to be a redeemer and a rescuer for family members who are in distress. Remember, in the Old Testament, God gave the people a promise, a covenant. I will be your God, you will be my people, and he promises to make of them a people and give them a place, a people and a place. And so God gave these heirs of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then the 12 sons, 12 tribes of Israel, they all had their land that God had given to part of the promise. And the Old Testament law was a way of protecting the land and the people, protecting the promise. Because what would happen if, if your family became very poor and destitute, what could you do? Well, you could sell off your land. Or you could sell yourself as a kind of indentured servant. You could uh, sell yourself into slavery for a period of time. That's what you did, if that's what you had to do to keep body and soul together. But the Old Testament law said, we don't want this land to pass out of the people of God when it has to be sold to keep... To, to, to earn enough to make a living. Or if people end up selling themselves into servitude, there needs to be a way of redeeming them. So the Old Testament law said the, the closest relatives need to take upon themselves buying back this land or buying back the freedom of relatives. That is a way of, of keeping God's promises. And this person then who would buy back the land or buy back the person would be known as the kinsman redeemer, the relative who comes in to rescue. And Boaz is that kinsman redeemer. He's a relative, so he has a right and a responsibility under the law to come in and help. He is not the closest relative. So Boaz says... Ruth, you have asked me to come in and to be your redeemer. And I am legally able to do that, but there is someone who is closer. And so I have to go to that person first. Because if that person wants to be your redeemer, then, then he is the closest one, isn't entitled to do that. So uh, Boaz does everything just by the book and what is right, and he goes to that, that closer kinsman and said... You have heard Naomi has come back, and she has a little bit of prof, uh, property from her, her husband who is dead, but you are a relative, and you are next in line to buy back that property if that's what you want to do. But Boaz does another thing that's kind of cool, and he's thinking about Ruth, and he says, but you've got to do this. If you take the property, you take Ruth as your wife. And this relative who said, well, the property sounds pretty good, but I'm not sure that I want another wife. So he says, I'm going to pass. And Boaz says, I will, 
I will take the property and I will take Ruth to be my wife. She comes in. He comes in as the kinsman redeemer. Now, in all of this, we are given this story uh, for many reasons. We're given a, a picture of God, We're, but we are also given quite a picture of Jesus in this passage because Boaz stands in as a kind of an example or a, a forerunner, a type of Christ. So there's so many valuable things in the book of Ruth, a, a picture of the, the, the compassionate side of the law at work, of the importance of family and how family needs to take care of one another, but we are also seeing a picture of the role that Jesus will play as our kinsman redeemer, as the one who redeems you and me from the guilt of our sin, from our bondage because of sin. Jesus is our kinsman redeemer. He pays our debts. He rescues us. He sets us free from sin and from the oppression of the devil. He secures for us our future, our, our safe livelihood, our eternal inheritance. He unites us to himself. He marries us, and we are his bride. So God is loving us through people like Naomi, as Naomi passed on the love of God and her love for Ruth. And God is loving us through Redeemer, just as Boaz was Redeemer to Ruth. He sends Jesus as our Redeemer. Well, what, what do we do then in response to these things? Two things I will lift up to you, and one is, one is a very practical note. As those who have been rescued... God may put us, us into a position to be rescuers ourselves. If we have been redeemed and united to Christ, then, then we, are, we are seeing others and valuing others more and more the way God does, with a compassion for the poor, as we see like in the gleaning, and care for those who work in our fields, and not just for the sake of human flourishing alone, but also for the greater good of human redemption, for salvation. Boaz is, is eager to be redeemer, uh, but he also points in his example to the redeemer who is going to come, to Jesus. He says, it is true that I am a redeemer, yet there is a redeemer nearer than I. Well, he's thinking of this closer relative, but we think of Jesus, the near redeemer. And can we say that we are redeemers also? Do we have family members who are in need? Uh, what about the church, the household of faith? Will God open our hearts as God opened the heart of Boaz? Ruth trusted Naomi. And then she trusted in the redeemer Boaz. She was devoted to her mother. I will go wherever you go. Your people will be my people. Ruth gave up everything because of her love for Naomi. And when we ask people to follow Jesus, we're asking people to give up everything and to follow Jesus. We're asking them to submit to another Lord. We're asking them to follow in a way that to the unbelieving world seems like craziness. We're asking a lot. Are we the kind of trustworthy people that can talk about Jesus in ways that people will listen? Boaz was. Can people trust us? And will we love them? And will we love them enough to lead them to the greater Redeemer? He is able to bring blessing out of bitterness and to be the restorer of lives. The women... Uh, surrounded Naomi and said, Blessed be the Lord who has left you, not left you this day without a Redeemer, and may his name be renowned in Israel. So we could be rescuers. But the other thing that we can do is just cling to our Redeemer time and time again. We are needy. We are desperate. 
we have all kinds of troubles, and we know the troubles we face. We face financial troubles. We face troubles with addictions. We face troubles with relationships that are strained and torn. We face health issues and uh, grief when we lose loved ones. We know about all those kinds of troubles. There are other kinds of troubles that we may not be aware of. Spiritual troubles. We may not be taking seriously enough how we have sinned against God and that we stand under God's judgment because we rebel against Him. We break His commandments and we need His grace and His mercy. So we have all kinds of perils that we face. And these bad things that we go through are intended to make us cry out to God for help and to seek help in Jesus the Redeemer. The gospel is an announcement of good news that we have a Redeemer. His name is Jesus, and He saves us. Ruth lay down at Boaz's feet and pleaded for his covering. And so we must bow down before Jesus and plead for His covering mercy and give ourselves fully to Him. Nothing is more important than that. Make sure of that. I love the story of Ruth. I finished reading these four chapters and I thought, what a beautiful and powerful and hopeful story of God's steadfast love. Naomi went out bitter, but she came in blessed. And so the story ends. Boaz took Ruth. She became his wife and went into her, and the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. Then the women said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a Redeemer. May his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him on her lap and became his nurse. And the women in the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. I always get chills when I read that sentence. Because this is not just a story of what life was like in Old Testament times or or a story of how, how families can help each other. It is that. But this is a story of the providence of God being worked out in a dramatic way. Naomi was at the end of her rope. Her husband was dead. Her sons were dead. Her daughters-in-law needed to go back to their own homes. And she would go back to the land of her origin to find what she knows not what. But God blesses Naomi through Ruth, through Boaz. And we see the providence of God bringing not only survival here, but the birth of a child. They named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David, the father of Jesus, the father of our Redeemer. Humanly speaking, what would have happened to us if Naomi had passed into obscurity and faded away in Moab? But God saw, and God heard, and God loved, and God sent a Redeemer. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, we rejoice. We rejoice in your loving kindness, 
in your determination to keep your promises to your people, for your providence that shapes the events of our lives so, so that when we endure those hard times, you are still our God who is keeping his promises. Lord, Naomi is in dire straits, but she continues to trust in your providence. Help us so to trust in you, O oh Lord. Ruth is so vulnerable, and yet she is trusting and devoted to her mother-in-law, Naomi. Lord, you know that we are vulnerable. Our health is precarious. Our finances are unsure. Our relationships uh, can break apart in a moment. We are vulnerable. Help us to be devoted to you. And Lord, Boaz is so kind and compassionate as a kinsman redeemer. In him we see our Savior Jesus who rescues us. And Lord, we rejoice in the redeeming love of Jesus. And may his love make us thankful to your loving providence and your compassion. And Lord, may your compassion to us make us compassionate to one another. Lord, we bow before you. We place our lives in your hands and the lives of loved ones that we raise up to you. Lord, on this Mother's Day, we want to thank you for every good thing that we have learned from our mothers, for every blessing that you have placed in our lives through our mothers. And Lord, help us to follow your wise commandment to honor our mothers and our fathers. Lord, we know it's a hard day for some. There, there are some who who grieve because of loved ones who are no longer here, and, and that void, that, that emptiness is painful. There are some, Lord, who, who so much want to be mothers and have not been able to be mothers, and they experience that void. And there are others, Lord, who uh, have fractured relationships with their own mothers or their own children. And, O oh, loving Lord, you are the reconciler. We pray that you would bring health and healing to relationships. <coughs> Excuse me. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would bring healing where there is need of healing. And we know, Lord, that you choose to do that especially as we draw close to you, that you heal our relationships with others as you help us to draw close to you. So, Lord, where there is brokenness in the relationship between you and your children, we pray, O oh Lord, O oh great kinsman redeemer, that you would rescue and restore, that you would bring back those who have strayed away. For those who are living in outright rebellion, breaking your commandments, ignoring you, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring repentance and faith. And Lord, we thank you that you love us so fully. We pray for those who grieve and mourn, we pray for Marcia Stein and her family as they grieve the loss of her mother. Uh, my goodness, uh, Marie achieved, O oh Lord, by your blessing, 107 years of age, and most of those years independently and full of life and of faith. We thank you for Marie and for her faith and for her homecoming. And Lord, we pray for all those who grieve and mourn, and we ask that you would uh, keep us mindful of the kingdom that you have for us and for the place that you set at your table for us and our loved ones who have gone before us in the faith. Lord, we pray that you would be with all of those who are hurting physically and need your strength and your healing. We pray for Bill Schultz Sr., we pray for Gordon Walter and that you would touch them, Lord, with the strength of your powerful right arm and bring healing and restoration. 
And Father, you know our needs, you know our pains. Help us to put them in your hands. Uh, some are, are facing uh, hard uncertainties right now. Show yourself, Lord, of the God of loving and wise providence. Enable us to see that our days are in your hands now and always. And Lord, that's where we want to be. Help us rest in you. And help us to put all of these things in your hands as we pray together as Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forget our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 492.
Go forth now under the grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Those of you who are Zooming in, I invite you to stay on and unmute yourselves and, and uh, uh, share fellowship together. And glad that you are able to be with us. Happy Mother's Day all. <laughs>